citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation. I'm Jeff, and today on episode 118, we're taking a look at all of the indie games hitting the Nintendo Switch through June 26th. After that, we'll check out some of the best eShop deals this week and help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. If you like our weekly indie rundowns, toss us a like and subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Twitter, come hang out with us on Discord, and stop by the YouTube channel on Thursday for our Nindies at Night stream. As you know, we always start with the neglected Nindies that were unaccounted for in the week prior. And with E3 happening just last week, we've got a ton. In fact, we've got no time to waste, citizens, so let's dive right in and kick off episode 118 of Nindy Nation by taking a look at the 11 neglected Nindies that released since episode 117. If you like Pokemon Snap, or you like the idea of taking photos in a serene, dreamlike environment, but don't appreciate the proverbial monsters of pockets, Beasts of Maravilla Island is just the game for you. Maybe. Developed by Banana Bird Studios and shadow dropped last week by Whitehorn Digital for 10 bucks, this game takes the formula of Pokemon Snap, but instead of riding on rails, you control the character through very calm and simple exploration as you find the beasts to take pictures of. Reviews are limited, but so far seem to fall in the 60s or 70s. Take a look for yourself as more reviews come out, because for 10 bucks, even if it isn't the best it can be, it still might be worth checking out. The team at Bold Pixel takes heavy inspiration from the classic LucasArts adventure games in their latest release, Side B, which launched for $5.99. It's a short, simple, retro-inspired story about a time traveler that finds himself in a run-of-the-mill Polish town in 1998. Huh. You know, I think I'd time travel back to 98 if I could. Go get a Pentium 2, watch some TRL, listen to the Godzilla soundtrack. Huh. Good year, 1998. Dunk Lords is one of those games that only exists nowadays because of indie developers, and with fairly positive reviews, I kinda wanna check it out. It's an arcade-style two-on-two basketball game like NBA Jam, but developer Storyfort, led by Andy Hole, the lead developer of Spelunky, decided to throw in a roster straight out of Space Jam and add a hearty dose of combat into the mix. It's available for $8.49, supports four players locally, and is easily the best pick this week if you want to play as a cyborg that beats the living snot out of a walking, talking strawberry. On the off weeks that East Asia Soft isn't publishing clever retro indies like Donuts and Justice, Lux Slinger, and Lo-Fi Ping Pong, they're cashing out with titles like Pretty Girls Klondike Solitaire. If you want to see what this fantastical study of future scoliosis patients look like, and play some single-player card games while doing so, it'll cost you $4.79. Cubite Interactive does not mince words with last week's release of Arcade Space Shooter 2-in-1, which released for $2.99. Featuring two games that are arcade in- well, um, do I really need to lay this out to you? One looks like Asteroids, and the other one is a shmup of some kind. They both look like 70s arcade games, and as soon as I checked out the trailer, I wanted to see them for myself. So stop by Nindies at Night this Thursday, and we'll check out this two-in-one package together. And Digital Game Group's Puzzle Pipes is actually a real-time simulation of how they managed to get bullshit like this from their offices in Bullshitzerland. Patrick Rainville developed this week's visual novel through Rataleka Games called Cross the Moon. It's got a hand-drawn art style that's like black and white pencil drawings on blurry two-tone backgrounds. It looks really cool. The story's about vampires and cults, and the artwork features a dude licking a lollipop. You can see what that's all about for $3.99, but I am guessing there's some sort of deeper hidden meaning. You know... I really dig what German developer Studio Fizbin is doing. They just kind of make cool stuff and don't worry about if it actually translates into a video game. Say No More was their most recent example, as was The Inner World, and last week they dipped into the off-kilter adventure of Minute of Islands, which released for $19.99. It looks almost as if, I don't know, 
The team behind Adventure Time made a TV series about where the wild things are using the color palette of something like Hyperlight Drifter. <laughs> if you nodded your head during that brain fart, let me know in the comments. Anyways, Minute of Islands follows a young mechanic named Mo as she sets out to repair the world, whatever that means, by going on a quest littered with story-based environmental puzzles. This is definitely the kind of game that I'd give someone a code to if they wanted to try their hand at making some community content for the channel. Just saying. Here's a quick video game history lesson from Ol' Uncle Nindy. There's a renowned Japanese developer by the name of Cave who's been around since 1994 and is best known for making some of the highest quality shoot-'em-ups around. Unfortunately, most of their games never see the light of day outside of Japan, and during Microsoft's ill-fated attempt to capture the Japanese market during the Xbox 360 era by any means necessary, there's a bevy of highly sought-after releases that are in extremely limited print and only available for Japanese Xbox 360s, where they sold a whopping 1.6 million consoles. Do you know where I'm going with this? By some stroke of magic, one of the most beloved titles called Mushi Himisama, which translates to Bug Princess, released last week on the Switch for 20 bucks. The port itself looks unfortunately pretty basic with a large but cool border surrounding the screen in almost any mode and very little by way of extras or options. It is, however, a previously very rare and very good shmup that is now available and definitely worth picking up if you're a hardcore fan of the genre. Class dismissed, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Apparently there's a TV show starring a moose that combines darts and trivia. It's called Bullseye, I guess. I've never heard of it. Either way, Sabek released a, well, I guess they'd call it an adaptation. Pfft, bullseye. More like bullsh**, am I right? Look at this guy. I can't tell if he's an idiot or not, or both. And speaking of which, no matter who you're surrounded by, be it idiots, okey friends, family, or all of the above, if you've got someone who likes to play games with you, I think the latest release by Ultimate Games, developed by The Dust, looks pretty fun. Together is some kind of side-scrolling action puzzle platformer where you and a friend are tethered together. And you explore a monochrome world by collecting items while restoring the world's color. It looks super janky, but more so in a funny way, and only looks like it'd be fun if you played it alongside a friend. But for seven bucks, it might be worth throwing on your wish list if you're looking for something a bit different to try the next time you are co oping on the couch. Giggity. Phew, that's a pretty solid list to start the week. With only a couple of no-nos, I didn't even give them their own segment. There's some good stuff out there. I'll be checking out Arcade Space Shooter this Thursday, and I'm interested in both Dunk Lords and Together, as well as the Cave Shooter, whatever it's called. What about you? Let me know down in the comments, and while you're scrolling, if you'd tap that like button, I would really appreciate it. We've got a packed week ahead of us, citizens, and there's a few titles that are definitely vying for your digital dollars. The releases hit strong right out of the gate, too, so let's get right into it. These are the 16 new releases hitting the eShop through the week ending June 26th. First up this week might just be our pick of the week, if early reviews are any indicator. Binary Haze Interactive, a brand new indie studio out of Japan, releases their first game on June 21st with Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights with a slight discount for $22.49. Featuring a dark fantasy vibe and the increasingly common formula of an exploration platformer with souls-like elements, Ender Lily's looks like a lot of indies that we love. It clearly shares a lot in common with Hollow Knight, as well as the Castlevania titles, specifically the DS trilogy, but the game I see most of here is 2019's 3000th Duel, which is one that I really loved despite some of its shortcomings. The game released in January on PC via Early Access, where consistent impressions have been mostly positive, and so far, early reviews from the full release are looking very, very promising. 
I've requested a code and can't wait to share more about Ender Lilies, maybe as part of Nindies at Night this coming Thursday. Another team making their case for the pick of the week is taking a cue from FDG Entertainment's beloved Wonder Boy remakes as Merge Games is going all out with their complete overhaul of Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX, also launching with a discount for $17.99. Whereas the Wonder Boy remakes went for an entirely new hand-drawn animation style, Merge Games has opted for modernized yet still gorgeous pixel art for their recreation of the Master System classic. This action platformer loads you up with all kinds of abilities that allow for occasional Metroid-like backtracking, a large variety of environments to explore with unique enemies to match, and of course the simple puzzles or platforming challenges you'd expect in a game from this era. With the flip of a switch, no pun intended, you can see the game in its original form, including the chiptune tune soundtrack, which I love in these kind of remakes. And they're actually creating a decent amount of new levels and bosses too. You probably already know if this is one that you're going to pick up, but I think anyone with an affinity for 2D games should at least add this one to their wish list. Now, I know we're only at the third game, and your wallet may already be laying on the ground writhing in pain, but... Hey, at least this next one has a demo. Super Magbot is another one of those challenging platformer games, but this one brings a slick style and a super original idea. The brainchild of two brothers based in Barcelona, Astral Pixel's first release has you dashing through all kinds of 16-bit environments with a character who lacks the ability to jump. Instead, you're given this magnetic ability that falls somewhere between a twin-stick laser sword and a grappling hook, right? You'll use your magnetic abilities alongside red and blue environmental puzzle cues to attract or repel as needed, and, <laughs> I mean, magnetic laser sword, grappling hook. I could have probably just stopped there, huh? Go grab the Super Magbot demo, and if you're not repelled by it, you can attract it to your Switch for $17.99. <laughs> the glitz and glam sure is fun, but sometimes you just want a cheap, simple game, and sometimes you find that that game is developed by sometimes you. Bitmaster is a twin-stick shooter that looks like an early 90s tech demo that you'd see on a TV segment that was touting the future of computer entertainment but I think it's charming. It seems about as basic as you can get, but I'm picking up some Distropolis vibes, and that's a good thing. I'm not expecting too much out of Bitmaster when it releases on June 23rd, but for $3.99, I'll give it a shot. So we're off to a great start, but just as Newton's third law states, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, the same can be said for the eShop, and that's where this week's Nindy Nonos come in. Benjamin Kistler put down his bowl of paint chips just long enough to release Wood Block Escape Puzzles 2, as if one wasn't enough punishment. And Tetris is fun, so he made sure to ruin that too, with Blocky Puzzle, where you put squares on a grid of squares. Is Tom Games is making a name for themselves as the publisher who takes their free-to-play Match 3 mobile games and charges upwards of $20 for them on the Switch. Cube Blast Match is this week's culprit. <laughs> if you consider their name literally, is Tom Games? No, it isn't. And of course, no list of eShop dog yeah. sh** would be complete without the dog yeah. sh** whisperer themselves at Game National. This week, they uploaded their kid's MS Paint file, and instead of fixing the error, they called it Aquatic Rampage. How is it possible they keep getting worse? Thankfully, the Big Thursday drop swoops in to save us with a heptagon of new releases on June 24th, when Plugin Digital suggests that you step into the wacky, heroic fantasy universe of the Dungeon of Nahal book, The Amulet of Chaos, Chicken Edition. Huh? After a bit of research, it seems like the Dungeon of Nahel book is a French online audio series, like a D&D podcast or something like Critical Role? That's at least what I've gathered, and it's mostly tongue-in-cheek parody with a significant following. Cool. Well, Artifacts Studio, I guess, made a game about that, and based on the teams involved here and the trailers available, it's a pretty meaty, well-received, turn-based, tactical dungeon crawler. 
problem is it's 45 bucks, which is a pretty steep price unless you're A, already familiar with this world, or B, a big fan of D&D roleplays and you want to see what this series is all about. I do like a good parody though, so I'll throw it on my wish list and maybe check it out in the future. Hey, do you like cars? Do you like racing? Do you like online? If so, and you happen to love the letter that comes after W but before Y, then get ready to part with 40 bucks because Car X Drift Racing Online is driving sideways right for your Switch and it's leaving a plume of smoke in its wake. And in a surprise twist, East Asia Soft is publishing a game that might fit the bill for both sides of the audiences they serve. Apparently a tactical RPG series since 1993, Softstar Entertainment is bringing the Empire of Angels series to console for the first time with a reimagining of Empire of Angels 4 for 1999. I'm not gonna lie, this looks like 90s turn-based RPG gold. Really, I'm super into this. I love the character classes, lots of environments, I can only assume a ridiculous nonsense JRPG story is there, and the production levels mix Fire Emblem-like conversations with chonky, chibi characters on the battlefield. The only problem, for me at least, is that every single character, and I mean all of them, it's a selling point, is a scantily clad anime girl. <laughs> I got embarrassed enough when my wife would ask me what the hell I was doing during Fire Emblem's tea dates, so this one's probably a bit too far. However, if anyone else is interested in checking this one out, or if you've played the series before and think it's great, let me know. Have we ever covered the publisher Edia before? I don't think we have. Either way, for 10 bucks, they launch yet another scantily clad anime girl visual novel that's all about some girl being a pop star. It's called Kira Kira Stars Idol Project Nagisa, and I love the description. What do you want to do as an idol? Meeting a top idol, I takes another step forward as an idol. You're the idol you used to sing to on stage? <laughs> I don't know what the f*** they're talking about. And while we're here, you know what, let's just go for it. Gamazumi is back with Sakura Succubus 3 for $9.99, and this game is just straight-up anime porn disguised as a visual novel. I don't even know if I can show the trailer. Kinda makes me want to look into some kind of switch accessory, like a hands-free harness so you can watch this stuff while you, uh, uh, do the dishes, or appreciate the artwork? That's gotta be a thing somewhere, right? Silesia Games and Manic Hyena release a game that definitely doesn't sound like something that would be released by a team called Manic Hyena. I first looked at the low-poly visuals and adorable kittens scattered about in Summer Paws and thought it looked like a cute, chill game for a mere five bucks. However, all you do is find the hidden kittens. <coughs> And lastly, on your big Thursday drop, Sebastian Lieb and the team at Sorb take elements of Super Meat Boy, Celeste, and N+, and wrap it all around a one-bit platformer with insanely trippy backgrounds in Super Cable Boy for $14.99. You play as a handheld game system on the fritz and work your way through a bunch of levels while swinging your power cable around to collect items and become more powerful. It features two-player local co-op, a steady difficulty curve, and accessibility options in what appears to be a challenging, well-rounded little game that is going on my wish list, earmarked for the first time I see it on sale. Before we get to the last new releases of the week, make sure to keep your eye out for, and promptly avoid, a trio of mistakes from the master of all things that should not exist, PixArts. Bocce. Probably don't need to explain that one. Ninja Buddy Epic Quest is another game engine asset flip. And sweet sugar candy sounds more like something I'd exclaim while clutching my pearls, but it's yet just another Candy Crush clone. And then as I'm recording this on Father's Day, I want to tell you about what is most likely the one thing I hate more than anything in this world, and that is the infestation of nursery rhyme videos that have infected online video platforms. Things like Coco Melon and especially Little Baby Bum have very likely become my son's first addiction, and I know he's not alone. 
If you've ever wanted to know what it's like to feel the rage of a serial killer while lazily generated 3D children sing a lullaby version of the wheels on the bus, go check out Little Baby Bum. If you want to see what those same characters look like in some kind of farming crap, there's Secret Item Games Farm for Your Life, and I already hate it. On Friday, June 25th, we've got four more titles to wrap up your week, and the day kicks off with Promisa for $4.99. Developed by Fantastico Studio, who makes great games like Black Paradox, which we'll talk about in the deals, Promisa is, well, it's about a 45-minute game where you walk through dreamlike environments that pop up as a grandfather and grandchild talk. It's dubbed a contemplative experience about what happens when we're left dreaming of the things we haven't lived firsthand. Okay. And... Artifacts Mundi has another dramatic watercolor point-and-click game this week. This one is called Enigmatis The Ghosts of Maple Creek. It's about unraveling a mystery in a small spooky town and releases for 15 bucks. Rataleka's new release this week is in partnership with Somipsx. How do you say that word? I don't think we've seen them before. Anyways, it's a pixelated, block-moving puzzle game called Loop Index, which launches for the usual $4.99. And finally for the week, I saved a good one for last. Cyberhook is basically what would happen if the world of Tron was turned into a super-fast-paced blend of first-person shooting and obstacle courses. It looks super rad and really fun, leaning much more into the parkour aspects than the shooting, and it launches by Blazing Stick and Graffiti Games to wrap up the week for $14.99. That's a great week! Ender Lilies and Super Magbot are topping my list. What about you? Let's chat about it down in the comments. By the time this video posts, the big E3 eShop sale will just be wrapping up, so we don't have a ton to go off of regarding new sales for the week, but there's still a few, so let's take a look at our picks for seven of the best Nindy deals through at least June 28th. Black Paradox is a fun little side-scrolling space shooter that has been a topic of conversation in our Discord quite a bit recently. It's got a great 80s vibe with an excellent soundtrack and comes complete with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! And is a great pick while it's 70% off for just $4.49. Pato Box is an oldie but a goodie, especially when it's just $2.99. It's Punch-Out, the over-the-shoulder boxing game with zany animated characters, but it throws in more narrative and even some elements where you walk around in that weird boxing perspective in between matches. Plus, I mean, you're like a beefed-up duck man, so how can you say no to that? Really though, Pato Box is awesome. Cathedral is in the running for Game of the Year for most people who had a chance to play it when it released back in February. Think of it as Shovel Knight, but a massive 20-hour open-world adventure, and you're headed down the right track. It might have one of my favorite soundtracks of the year, too, and we played it on Nindies at Night if you want to go back and see more. It's currently 30% off for $10.49, and it is definitely worth checking out. If it's a couple of short but unique action platformers you're after, there's not much else like the Gunman Clive collection. And with two games in the bundle, 40% off for $2.99, it's a great price for two games with an incredibly cool art style that'll each take you about an hour or so to beat. This next one, look, this game is only for those of you who loved playing Road Rash back on the Genesis, or the CD version that came to the PlayStation with the awesome soundtrack and the Soundgarden music video. Is Road Redemption any good? Eh. Is it exactly what you remember Road Rash to be, with a bunch of dudes racing on motorcycles, running from the cops, and whacking each other with blunt objects? Yup. <laughs> If that tickled your nostalgia, I think it's worth 10 bucks while it's half off. Just keep your expectations in check. Speaking of run and gunners, and speaking of Metroidvania-like exploration platformers, and speaking of metal music, 
If you want to see all of those things mixed together with a heavy dose of some of the best pixel art you'll ever see, even if it's super gory, Valfaris is the game for you, and it is currently at its lowest price ever, 60% off for $9.99. And finally, a pick for $6.14 that has also been a regular hit with the Nindy Nation citizens. The Digirati Anti-Hero Bundle is back on sale once again. Yes, this does come with Nefarious, the silly little platformer about being a bad guy who wants to be good. And yes, it also includes Reverse Crawl, a super fast turn-based RPG that's fun and janky as hell, but those are just extras. The real attraction here is Under Hero, and this game is a gem. You play as a bad guy who wants to be good, and you work your way through an open-ended, narrative-driven action RPG that takes all kinds of retro elements and blends it in with some modern stylings and a heartwarming story. Under Hero alone is worth six bucks, but all three of these for that price? It's a great deal! Let me know down in the comments what you're picking up this week, and thanks to everyone who checked out last week's deals video. It was fun to see all the new viewers. Welcome to those who have come back. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more indie game content. And if you're feeling social, go follow Nindy Nation on Twitter and hang out with us on Discord. We'll have Nindies at night this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern, so stop by and check out a couple of this week's new releases with all of us right here on YouTube. Otherwise, that's it for this week, citizens. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you right back here next Tuesday for episode 119 of Nindy Nation. And until then, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 118. And remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.